Hey guys, well here we are today in Fusion 360 and we're going to get started with the first part of our injection molded machine. We're going to start with the base plate. The base plate for the injection molded machine is a piece of one inch thick mic 6. It's 8 by 12. Fortunately this project is uh, fairly simple. I won't go into the details of how to draw this up. Uh, it's, it's a pretty basic design here. Um, we've got some three-quarter inch tin threads here for some threaded rod. We've got six M8 holes here for mounting the push-pull toggle. And then on the bottom we've got uh, three countersink holes here to mount the vice uh, backstop in this pocket. Uh, one thing I want to point out is it's hard for an end mill to get into a corner so most of the time you'll see where people will drill a hole to kind of give a relief for this corner and uh, that's what we've done here. I didn't put a chamfer on this because this piece is uh, quite large and I can't get around the whole radius of the part. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off on the back side doing our machining. And you can see we've set our coordinates here for this right side edge for X and the center for Y. The first operation is I'm going to use an eighth inch drill bit just to kind of center drill for these holes. Uh, then we're going to come back with a quarter inch drill bit. So I'm running this at 3,000 RPMs. We're uh, plunging at 3 inches per minute. Um, we are going to be doing uh, deep drilling with a pecking depth of a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, we are drilling all the way through and we're going to have a clearance of 40 thousandths to break through. Next we're going to come back with a larger drill bit. This is a 7 16 inch drill bit. 3500 RPMs again uh, plunging at 3 inches per minute. We're doing a hundred thousandths peck. Again 40 thousandths breakthrough. Next we're going to use a 3 8 inch 60 degree chamfer mill. And this is a actually a boring operation. But I'm using a countersink uh, end mill to do this. And it's going to actually do most of the work here with the countersink. Um, I like doing it this way because if you use a traditional uh, method where it's more like a contour where it just plunges down and then goes around and that just hogs off too much material and I never get a good uh, finish on that. So using this message, method what I've done is I've just created this dummy tool as you can see here with a small center. I just use that to do this uh, roughing operation and it works out well. I, I, I designed this a few years ago. There may be some changes in Fusion 360 for um, doing counter bores or counter sink like this. Um, but at the time this was kind of a workaround. Uh, we're running 5000 RPMs cutting at 15 inches per minute and we're going down about 3 16 for our depth here 0.18 after we do the roughing with the countersink we're going to come back with a uh, the same tool and we're going to just select the wall here as our face and it's going to follow along the contour of the cone here to do the countersink and what this is doing is just a finishing pass on the wall and this cleans up real nice and this allows me to set the head depth of the countersink screw. I do have this offset slightly. Uh, we're using a 20 thousandths pitch and the offset is 40 thousandths. I've got it set with the radial stock to leave and you can see that the tool path is offset from the wall here 40 thousandths. Again we're running this at 5000 RPMs and 15 inches per minute. And this leaves a nice finish in the countersink. The last operation is we're going to 
clear off the round off these square corners here uh, this is a 3 8 inch three flute aluma power end mill we're running at 5,000 rpms and 30 inches per minute um, we're taking I believe 35 30 thousandths width of cut here and you might ask why are you only cleaning off these two corners and not the front two uh, this particular part is eight and three eight point three six four uh, width and because it's sitting in the vise it just doesn't I don't have enough clearance under my way cover for my z-axis it hits it I need about another half inch and the way cover sticks out about an inch so I don't have clearance so I can't get this front edge uh, because of that I'm not going to chamfer the uh, parameter of the part here for the same reason um, next we're just gonna a uh, last operation is we're just gonna do a um, contour here finish off this edge once we get the uh, backside finished here we're going to flip the part over and we're going to do the front again we're going to use the right side for our X and the center for our Y we got quite a few more operations here. We're going to be doing um, a good bit more. The first operation is to center drill all these holes and do the corners for the pocket here. Uh, this is again an eighth inch drill bit and we're going about an eighth inch deep. Second operation is we're going to drill the holes for the M8 screws. Uh, this is a 6.7 millimeter drill bit or a 0.26 uh, drill we're pecking at 8 inches per minute 3500 rpms we're going about 3 quarters of an inch deep uh, we're going to use the same drill bit since it's already in there to drill through for the four holes for the 3 quarter 10 threads uh, we're then going to come back with a M8 thread mill and we're going to thread mill these holes here uh, then we're going to come back with a three flute end mill. This is a 5 16 Aluma Power. And we're going to use this to bore the minor diameter for our three quarter 10 threaded holes here. Uh, this is a nice trick if you have you don't have the exact size drill bit or you want to tighten up the threads a little bit. You can use an end mill to do a boring operation. Uh, this is my preferred method of doing this, and uh, it, it gives me good results. Next, we're going to come back with a 3 quarter 10 thread mill. Uh, this is a brand new bit I had to purchase just for this project. Uh, they're very expensive, so I was a little bit nervous um, the first time running this, but having experience with other thread mills, I kind of knew how to set my tool up. Um, for those of you that never set up a thread mill, let's take a look real quick at the tool for this. Depending on whether or not you have a, I have both metric and standard thread mills. Uh, this is a three quarter ten thread. The information, most of this information is on the uh, package that comes with your end mill. Uh, the diameter of the, that's from point or the edge, the cutting edge, is 0.95 inch. The shaft diameter is 5 eighths. The overall length is 4 inches. Uh, the length below the holder, that is something I input. Uh, that's the distance between here to here once I get it uh, into a tool holder. Uh, the shoulder length, most of these thread mills have a shoulder. Uh, this one happens to be an inch and a quarter. So that's as far down as you can go into the depth of a hole. Uh, for this particular part, we only need to go down one inch. Our flute length is 0.125. And the thread pitch is 0.1. Now to get this, so in order to find the thread pitch for 3 quarter 10, it's 10 threads per inch. So we're just going to take one. Divide it by 10, and we get 0.1. Uh, if your metric 
it's pretty easy because they already give you the thread pitch so if it's a m6 by one it's a one millimeter thread pitch and then the number of teeth is how many actual teeth you have on the end mill so if we had four we would just type in uh, four so this is a single point thread mill so we just type in one uh, most of my other thread mills are th uh, have three teeth on there and then the profile of the thread is 60 degrees you don't need to set anything for the shaft the holder I'm using the ER32 it's a Tormop TTS holder um, the cutting data set up the RPMs uh, the feed rate that you want to feed at uh, the post processor you just need to give it a tool number when you set up the actual cam here the actual operation one thing I do want to point out is the offset. So to figure the pitch diameter offset, normally this is filled in for you, um, but you need to double check it. The major diameter for a three quarter ten is obviously three quarters of an inch, so 0.75. And the minor diameter, you look, you can look that up on some tap drill charts. Um, I'm using 0.642. And that leaves me with a pitch offset of 0 0.108. Uh, we're going to repeat the pass, and we're also going to lead to the center. This is um, very important because what happens is this end mill is going to dive straight through your hole. So you want to have lead to center checked, otherwise, it's going to scrape the side of your hole. Another important item is your lead-in feed rate uh, when you're doing this for the first time you might want to adjust this uh, kind of low so that it goes down into the hole and you can make sure you've got all the clearance and everything that you need and everything looks good uh, the next operation is our pocket here this is just a 2d pocket so we're going to plunge down into the center full depth which is uh, an eighth of an inch and we're just going to use a three flute quarter inch end mill and just go back and forth until we clear this pocket out. Uh, then we're going to come back with a 1 8 inch end mill to get these corners here. So we'll have nice straight walls. Uh, last, we're going to finish up with the adaptive and clean these two corners up again and follow that up with the contour operation. Let's take a quick look and we'll run this through the simulation. Uh, the machine time on this is 18, 19 minutes basically. So the first operation is we're going to use an eighth inch drill bit, the center drill. We're going to follow that up with our quarter inch drill bit and use that to drill all the way through the stock. Next we're going to come with a 7 16th inch drill bit again. We're going to follow that up with a boring operation using our 3 8 inch chamfer mill. And then last, we're going to clear the corners up with a three flute, three eighths inch Aluma Power end mill, and follow that up with a contour operation to uh, just finish that edge off. And then for the top side, we're going to use the eighth inch drill bit to center drill all our holes. Also, drill the corners of the pocket here as well as the six holes here for our M8 then we're going to come back with a 6.7 millimeter drill bit this is our uh, drill bit for our M8 holes here we're going to drill use this drill bit to drill these six holes as well as drill all the way through the stock for our um, 3 quarter 10 threaded rod then we're going to come back with uh, a M8 thread mill we're going to thread these six holes to mount our push-pull toggle then we're going to come back with a 5 16 three flute aluminum power end mill and we're going to use this to bore the three-quarter ten holes to our minor diameter 0.642 Uh, then we're going to follow that up with a three-quarter ten single flute 
thread mill. We're going to thread these three quarter ten holes. Then we're going to machine this 2D pocket. This is a quarter inch three flute Aluma Power end mill. Uh, we're, our depth of cut is a uh, 0.125 and the width of cut is uh, 35 thousandths. And we're going to just uh, use the 2D pocket operation here to clean this pocket out. Once we do that, we're going to finish up with a 1 8 inch end mill and just contour the edges. Then we're going to use a 3 8 inch 3 fluid lumen power end mill to knock the corners of our here. Again, we can only machine the back side because we can't reach to the front side uh, due to clearance issues. And we're going to follow that up with a contour operation just to clean those up. Well, this video is running a little bit long, so I think we'll wrap it up there. In the next video, we'll actually machine out the base plate on the Precision Matthews. Guys, if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in, click on that subscribe button. Also, check that notification bell. That way, when I post a new video, they'll send you a link, and if you're interested, you can stop by and check it out. As always, please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, or leave comments. Thumbs up if you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and most importantly, be safe.